The first military burial in Arlington National Cemetery took place during the Civil War in May of 1864. Author Robert Poole traces the history of the cemetery in On Hallowed Ground, the story of Arlington National Cemetery. Book TV joined Mr. Poole in Arlington to hear some of the stories from his book. We also recorded portions of the funeral of a U.S. Marine who was killed in Afghanistan. This program is about 30 minutes. We're in uh, section 27 of Arlington National Cemetery. Uh, this is one of the oldest sections of the military cemetery at Arlington. And it's where the story of Arlington National Cemetery really begins. Uh, Arlington has so much history tied up in the Civil War. Uh, this section of, of the cemetery was begun in May 1864, really before there was a cemetery. How did that happen? It happened that uh, 1864, the war had been, Civil War had been going on for several years, and Washington was really a hospital city at that time. There were as many as 50,000 uh, soldiers and sailors in the hospitals of Washington, temporary hospitals set up all over town. And of course, those people uh, started dying and they had to be buried. So earlier in the war, the national cemeteries were established at Alexandria, Virginia, and at the old soldier's home in Northwest Washington. Uh, they were uh, planned to accommodate all of those who died in the Washington area hospitals. What happened was that the war went on much longer and was much bloodier than anybody expected, so that we pretty soon filled up the, the graveyards, the national cemeteries at Alexandria and at the old soldiers' home in Washington and needed new burial space. So the quartermaster's office of the Union Army looked across the river and found this place, Arlington, and thought it would be a good place to begin burying people. Uh, Arlington happened to be the home of Robert E. Lee, the Confederate general. So not only was it a convenient place to begin military burials from the Civil War, it was also thought to be a, uh, a matter of justice, <clears throat> maybe even vindication, if you want to call it that. The first military burials at Arlington came in May of 1864, well into the Civil War. And the very first of those burials was a private from the 67th Pennsylvania Infantry named uh, William Christman. Uh, he was a farmer. He was from a, uh, a, a poor family. And he came to serve in the Union Army. Uh, unfortunately, he ended up in the hospital in Washington uh, he got uh, a case of German measles, which uh, killed many, many service members on both sides of the war. He developed uh, peritonitis from his uh, measles infection, and he died in a Washington hospital, was brought across the Potomac River here to Arlington as the first military burial. Things were so desperate at that time in the Civil War uh, there were so many people dying that there wasn't much time for ceremony or ritual at Arlington. They would bring people over for burial day after day after day, and they went into the ground as William Christman did with no flags flying, no bugles playing, all, quite often not a chaplain to give them a send off. So basically we were just trying to keep up with the, the carnage from the, the Civil War when Arlington began. During the war, things were so desperate that there wasn't any time for tombstones. They had headboards. They were made out of pine or walnut, painted white with black lettering. Uh, those, of course, had to be maintained or they fell apart so that in the years after the Civil War, as we began to clean up, we began to make sense of things, uh, Someone came up with a design in the uh, 1870s, late 1870s, early 1800s, for the uh, white marble tombstones you see at Arlington today. 
uniform design, anyone who uh, qualified for burial here qualified for one of these tombstones. The earliest stones were like these you see here, with, which have the, the name, uh, the company, the state, and the date of burial, and an incised shield. Uh, later, the, the design was simplified just to include the, the name of the person, the date of birth, and the date of burial. That's the modern uh, tombstone you see in other sections of the cemetery today. The first burial, military burial here, William Chrisman, was typical in that, uh, like many soldiers who died in the Civil War on both sides, he wasn't killed by a bullet or a cannonball, he was killed by a disease. Most of the people who died, in the, more of the people who died in the Civil War died from infections, dysentery, yellow fever, uh, measles, mumps, uh, than died from battle wounds. And most of the people you see in this section of the cemetery are in that category. Uh, William Christman was buried in May 1864. Arlington Cemetery was not established until a month later, June of 64, 1864. It was officially designated a national cemetery, and uh, it began to, to fill up very, very quickly. This part of the cemetery we're in, section 27, uh, was called the Lower Cemetery. As you can see, it's at the edge of Arlington. There's a road just, to, just outside of the cemetery here. Uh, you can't see the Lee Mansion from, from this location. And that's the way the officers who were living and working in the Lee Mansion during the war wanted it. They didn't want to see the burials coming in. They didn't want to be living in a graveyard, working in a graveyard. They wanted these graves out of sight and out of mind. Uh, the Quartermaster General, Brigadier General Montgomery Meggs, uh, didn't like that idea. It, it, as a matter of fact, he didn't have much use for Robert E. Lee. They had served together in the Union Army. Meggs considered Lee a traitor and uh, thought he should be hanged for his uh, desertion of the Union Army and his leadership of the uh, Army of, of uh, Northern Virginia. So Meggs came to Arlington on the day it was officially begun as a cemetery, June 14, 1864, came to this part of the cemetery, looked around, and was upset that there were no graves around the Lee Mansion. So his next act was to go up the hill, where we will go shortly, and to uh, begin to put burials right up next to the mansion. He didn't want the Lees to be able to come back after the war was over. So you will see uh, Meggs' strategic approach to the creation of Arlington Cemetery up the hill in Mrs. Lee's garden. So we are now up on the hill overlooking Washington, D.C. at the Lee Mansion. Yes. And I'm aiming the camera at Mrs. Lee's garden. Yes, this is uh, Mrs. Lee's garden on the hill, the highest point at Arlington National Cemetery. This was the home of Robert E. Lee, Mary Custis Lee, before the Civil War. And at the height of the Civil War in 1864, the first military burials were made in the cemetery, the lower cemetery, out of sight of the mansion. Quartermaster General didn't think that the graves were close enough to the mansion so that he found uh, officers who had died in service, and he had them buried here around uh, Mrs. Lee's garden to make it more difficult for the Lees to return to Arlington after the war. So if we walk along here, we see that these, these tombstones actually encircle the garden? Yes, they don't go all the way around it, but they, they form a, uh, a border around part of the garden. I think there's something like, at, at the end of the war, there were something like 40 graves of officers. And you know, we don't know exactly what Meggs' thinking was, but I suspect he chose to bury officers here rather than uh, privates you know, and enlisted men because it would make it more difficult to remove them after the war was over because they were more prominent, they were better known. So it was a strategic move on Meggs' part and it proved pretty effective because by, uh, by the end of the war, 
there were not only these graves here, but there were thousands of other graves in Arlington, and it made it very difficult for the Lee family to return here.